And when, when Peter and I started this company, we sat down and we thought about, man, this is a big challenge and it's going to be a lot, of, it's a lot of tough stuff to talk about and to do. Who do we really get to run the technical part of this? I mean, who could it possibly be? And we both looked at each other and we said, there's one person who can do it. And it's Chris the Wiki. We had no doubt in our minds that he was the guy. And when we called him up and said, Chris, it's time. Let's go do this. That's where we got to where we are today. And so I'd like to welcome you, Chris. Come up here, my friend, and share with us some of your vision for the future. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Lewicki, and I'm an asteroid miner. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here today to introduce our philosophy, our roadmap, and our people. And uh, as Eric was remarking, um, you know, landing things on Mars and you know, the great things that both Eric and Peter have done. Uh, we've all been in, involved in uh, things that are excite, exciting, things that are, you create wonder, but uh, in the last few days I've realized that uh, we've all been waiting for something that creates hope. So let me tell you about that today. Planetary Resources goal is to develop the resources of space. And in order to achieve this goal, we're going to need to dramatically reduce the cost of space exploration and specifically asteroid exploration. We're going to combine the best practices of aerospace. We're also going to take a Silicon Valley style of innovation to create robotic explorers that cost one, maybe two orders of magnitude less than current systems. So what's being done today in space, we've gone to asteroids, we've visited them, but it's costed us hundreds of millions of dollars, upwards of a billion in some cases. And we're going to do it for tens of millions of dollars. And we're charting a path that gets us to single digit millions per prospecting spacecraft. That's two orders of magnitude or a factor of a hundred lower. And that is out there. That is bold, that is crazy, and that's what attracts me to this because those are the types of advances that we need. Those are the things that are going to kind of raise the capability for everyone and give everyone better access to space. Our economy has shown that innovation in cost and innovation in market, those two things are every bit as important as innovation and capability. We're creating simple, elegant designs that can be executed by our small, very focused, and very expert team. And although we'll hold ourselves to the highest standards, we're going to aggressively take and accept risk where it's appropriate. Our philosophy will allow for the rapid development of commercial interplanetary space exploration. So, actually, I'm going to take a break and get some water. When Kennedy said, let's go to the moon, we didn't start the next day and say, let's design a moon lander. We knew very little about the moon. Uh, all the technologies that were going to enable that had, in many cases, yet to be invented. So how did we start? We started with robots. We started with a series of spacecraft, names like Ranger, Lunar Orbiter, Surveyor. We had nine Rangers and five Lunar Orbiters. And seven surveyors, and many of them failed. And if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But we had a campaign of learning about the moon, and we launched one after the next after the next, and each of them advised us how to make the next one better. And from that experience, we learned about the moon, and we learned about how to explore the moon, and that enabled the Mercury program, the Gemini program, and ultimately the great and tremendously inspirational success that was the Apollo program. So through that, we as a nation proved our technologies. We tried out different strategies. And we also tested our team. So planetary resources 
we'll do the same thing to develop our technologies to access the resources of space. So our first series of prospecting spacecraft is the ARCID series. And the ARCID series is what does the prospecting. We've been working on the, the ARCID 101, and the 101 operates in low Earth orbit as a commercial space telescope. And uh, we've actually got the 102 on the stage next to me here today. Rapid cycles, responding to different addresses, uh, different needs, and creating a capability uh, that is able to learn from the previous generations. And the great thing about our 100 series is that the derivative uses that our customers are going to find for it. We, planetary resources, will use this capability to look out to the asteroids, find our targets, characterize them, learn more about them. But it'll also be used to look back to ourselves here on Earth. And it's got a whole bunch of interesting features, arc second resolution, modularity, redundancy in numbers. We'll use it as a demonstration platform for the communication technology that will let us go out to deep space. It'll be operated by, not only by ourselves, but PhDs, and it'll be accessible all the way down to school children. And in the configurations that we build, we'll take advantage of the many different rides that get us into space. So in many ways, I believe Doug mentioned the personal computer, our 100 series and what follows it is a lot like the personal computer. It's a personal te te uh, space telescope that'll make a once rare tool available for an entirely new audience, much like the PC did in moving us from the mainframe and putting a powerful tool in the hands of everyone. After the 100 series, we'll build the 200 series. It'll include the capability to leave the Earth and make our initial technology demonstration missions with Earth approaching asteroids. And as Eric mentioned, we'll begin the direct prospecting activities with the 300 series, targeting multiple asteroids using swarm spacecraft expeditions. And what is a swarm? A swarm expedition is a half a dozen spacecraft collaborating to learn more about our target asteroid, distributing the risk among multiple spacecraft and allowing us the opportunity to do things that couldn't be done with just one spacecraft. We'll draw on innovative techniques that have been invented in the last decade, like cloud computing. We'll leverage cognitive science and other techniques to achieve an unprecedented level of, of autonomy. And this has been a theme we've been talking to you about this morning. We know this is hard. Uh, we know it's difficult. We know we're, always not, gonna, we're not always going to succeed. And when failure is not an option, success gets really expensive. We're approaching risk in a new way for space exploration. With our swarm expedition, we're taking safety in numbers. We will live with and we will learn from our failures. And based on what we've learned, we'll implement the next series, which will begin the material collection and processing in support of asteroid mining. With our ARCID series, we're doing many things that have been done before, but we're doing them in a way that has never been done before. So I've spoken a little bit about technology, spoken a little bit about our spacecraft, but really, it's about our people. We're building a new kind of company, a new kind of spacecraft team. Our people are making all of this happen. You've already met Eric and Peter, our industry starting co-founders, you've learned of some of our visionary investors. The in engineers who are implementing our vision have the highest levels of experience in the most difficult robotic exploration the world has yet done, landing spacecraft on another planet. And we're about to do that again here in August, and many of our team have participated in that effort. We're taking their experience that was gained from an investment made by NASA over the last 50 years in the exploration of space. And we're applying that knowledge to new applications in the private sector. But our team isn't just rocket scientists. Many of the exponential advancements in technology that we enjoy today were refined and progressed in the private sector in areas such as consumer electronics, medical devices, even the automotive, automotive industry. 
drawn from these areas of experience that have rapidly developed in the recent years, our team is taking today's technology and reaching deeper into space. So our small team, with its focused goal and a simple spacecraft, will achieve our innovation and cost. You can meet more of our team by visiting our website and hearing their story. So what's different in this day is that our team does not need to do it alone. In the last decade, we've witnessed the power of the connected mind. Wikipedia, distributed science, incentive prizes, do-it-yourself or DIY, all these things are changing the way that we solve problems and the way that we work together and the way that we move forward. And in the last few days, uh, since news of our company has gotten out, we have been absolutely overwhelmed by the thousands of messages and the volunteers who want to help change the way space is explored. So, in the near future, we've got your information, we'll be in touch. We'll be reaching out, and this year and in the years to come, we'll be working together as a planet to make this happen. So our advisors, uh, we're very privileged to have advisors who share our vision and who are leaders in their fields. I realize I haven't been advancing. Oh, someone's advancing through my slides for me. Uh, James Cameron has been in the news stories. Uh, James Cameron is a consummate explorer. You're familiar with what he's been doing, the depths of the ocean, and his in interest expands into the depths of space. General T. Michael Mosley is a former member of the Joint Chiefs and uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force. Dr. Sarah Seeger is a professor of physics and planetary science at MIT. Dr. Mark Sykes is on our advisory board, and he's the CEO and director of the Planetary Science Institute in Tucson, Arizona. And David Vaskovich, who is a former CTO of Microsoft. But uh, Peter had mentioned it, and there's one person I'd like to call out special attention to. I think he's back here, Dr. John Lewis. And this is his life's work and he's written extensively about it. And he's had this great idea all along, and we're gonna make it happen. And John is joining us on our advisory board, and uh, we're excited about the future we're gonna create. So, I was a student of John's at the University of Arizona when he taught a planetary science course, 